بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله in our last class of seerah or tafsir of the Quran through the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we looked at the events that happened after the trip of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to Ta'if. And that's because with this tafsir of Surah 2 Al-Inshirah. And after Ta'if, we mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, after the people of Ta'if, they rejected this da'wah. It continued with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Inshirah, which is what? فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you finish one action, move on to another action. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like this, a lesson for us in life, is that in life, you're either going forward or you're going backward. Mankind is never in a stagnant state. You're either progressing or degressing. You're either becoming elevated or becoming what? Decreasing or going down in a level. And what is the proof of this in the Quran? The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes many oaths. That whatever will from amongst you to either go forward or backwards. So when you're in a state where you think you're stable or you're on the same level or you're stagnated, stagnation in reality means what? It means you're going backwards. It means you're decreasing. It means your level is going down. So after the people thought if they rejected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued with another action which we looked at last week, which was tawaf al-qaba'il. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to approach the different tribes. He didn't say the people of Ta'if rejected me, I'm going to stop. He started to go to the different tribes. And we said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he chose the opportune moment to do this, to show the wisdom of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He chose a perfect time to do this, which he knew that the Arabs would be coming at that time. And what time was this? Mosimul Hajj, the time of Hajj. And knowing that the objective of why he's approaching them is clear, the Prophet ﷺ only chose to approach certain tribes. So objective was clear. So he didn't go to any tribe. He didn't go to anybody from the tribes, but he went only to particular tribes. Why? Because the objective of why he's approaching the tribes was clear. And why was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approaching these tribes? What was the purpose of approaching these tribes? Why? What did we mention last week? For Nusra, to give victory to the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, for Man'a, to protect the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so maybe to convey the law, his Lord's message. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had clear objectives. And based on these clear objectives, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only approached certain tribes, not all the tribes. And also because the objectives were clear to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person that had knowledge of the tribes, the history of the Arabs, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put him as the lead of the project. So he is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of humanity, the leaders of the Muslims. But to lead that project, he put somebody else in charge. And we said this is a lesson in project management. That leading a project is not about status, it's about a role. So a person might be greater in status, but the one who leads the project is less in status because he's the best person for that role. And who did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam choose for that role? Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. He led that project to know which tribe will fulfill the criteria objective of that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted. 
And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi will only speak after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has done what? His questioning. Subhanallah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, he could reveal to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, the stronger the tribe, the issue of the Arab, is to teach us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا that indeed in the message of Allah, you have a perfect example how we should do things. Because you're the head of an organization, the head of your family, doesn't mean you know everything. You're the best in everything. Somebody less than you in status may have to lead. You might be an alim, memorize Bukhari, all the uh, six books, the Quran. But when it comes to making a furniture, when it comes to carpentry, you may have to ask a carpenter. So Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu and based on the clear objectives from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was placed as the one to lead the project. And even though he knew the history of the Arabs, he knew the lineage of the Arabs, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, to make sure these are the right people, he asked key questions. And what were those key questions? What questions did he ask? Because the objective was what? Protection and to give aid and to give victory. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam only sought this protection when? After the death of who? Abu Talib. Because nobody could protect him anymore. So what were the key questions we mentioned last week that Abu Bakr radiallahu an, based on these object, uh, 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 objectives were asked? What were the key questions? Very, very good question. And but good so far, Allah barik feek. The first question we ask is adad fikum? How many are you in numbers? To show from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is numbers. From the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned before, is to have many children and to make the ummah grow so the first thing abu bakr al-siddiq radiallahu an will ask kayfa al-adad fikum how many you are you in numbers and then the second question you ask like he, uh, he mentioned is kayfa al-man'a fikum how good are you in protecting and the third question you ask kayfa al-harbu fikum how good are you when it comes to battles so based on these objectives they only approach certain tribes and last week we mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will approach the lead, or Abu will approach the leaders of these tribes, and the tribes that they approach. The first tribe that they approach, we mentioned last week, was what tribe? Banu Amir. They approached Banu Amir, and approaching them was based on a dirasa, based on research, to teach us if you're going to do anything. One of the first steps before you do it is to do what? Your research. Do your homework. They did it based on research and based on taqtit. Not only research, based on strategy. So we mentioned the approach Banu Amir based on research. And the research concluded certain things about Banu Amir. What did the research, Ya Luqman, conclude about Banu Amir? What was the conclusion of that research? The conclusion of that research concerning this particular attack, Banu Amir, is that it was qabila, it was a tribe, muqatala. They were warriors. That was the first research. That this tribe, they were just warriors. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam went to them because they're warriors. Because he did man'a. He needed protection. So I want to aid the deen of Allah azza wa jal. What was the taqtid? What was the strategy? Because it's not just because they were warriors. That's the research. There was a strategy behind it. The strategy was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam also wanted Banu Thaqif. He wanted Banu Thaqif and Banu Amir. Now, if Banu Thaqif and Banu Amir were neighbors, we were neighbors to each other. If they rejected the call of the Prophet from the inside, what did he plan to do? Lay a siege on them from the outside and pressure them to Banu Amir. So it was based on research and it was based on strategy. So the Prophet وسلم, approached Banu Amir. And did they accept the call of the Prophet? Did they know this was the truth? So much so, yes, they knew it was the truth. What did he say? If I take this person onto our side, I would devour all the Arabs with him. Then he said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, What do you think if it was to give you this pledge of allegiance? وَأَظْهَرَكَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ خَالَفَكَ هَلْ يَكُونُ لَلَ الْأَمْرُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ أو بعدك? If Allah gives you victory against those who oppose you from the Quraysh and you become established on the face of the earth, after you, do we have the leadership? Because we helped you. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what was his answer? 
That leadership belongs to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is your condition, I could not accept it. After this, it said to Prophet Sallam, you're going to make our necks a target for the Arabs, and then you become victorious. You don't give us leadership. Ma'assalama. They refuse. After this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the second tribe. And what was his tribe? Banu. Banu Shayban. Jazakallah khairan. Banu Shayban. Banu Shayban, they likewise, they knew the truth of that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. But before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would speak, who would speak first? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he asked him, كيف العدد فيكم? How many are your numbers? To show they did their homework. And how many were Bani Shayban? A thousand. They had a thousand warriors. And then, he mentioned in that number, he said, وَلَن تُغْلَبُ أَلْفٌ مِنْ قِلَّةٌ A thousand of us could never be defeated. And then, what did Abu Bakr al-Siddiq ask him next? How is you, or are you in the Council of Protection? He said, for us, we are the most angry of people when we're met in a battle and when we decide to go to battle with the most severe and angry of people he said and we love our horses that we use for fighting more than our children and we love our weaponry more than our camels so this was the tribe that they needed so they approached the sheikh of the tribe the the leader of the tribe and he understood and accepted the da'wah of the prophet but he said we have to go back to our people but knowing exactly what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted, he sought counsel from who? The Sheikh Ul Harb. The leader or the Sheikh of warfare, their commander. And what was the name of the commander? Because this commander, when people mention the heroes of Islam, the people who had braveness in the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, such as Khalid bin Walid, is always mentioned amongst them. Who is this? Muthanna ibn al Haritha. This was a serious commander, Muthanna. So no approach Muthanna. Muthanna told the Prophet ﷺ, indeed, what you come with is the truth. But we need to go back to our people. But to show he's convinced and he's ready, he says to the Prophet ﷺ, but we have two problems. We're between two parties. And what are the parties? He said, between Miya'ul Arab, the water of the Arabs, and Persian waters. He says, as for the Persians, Whoever goes against them, they never forgive. And there's no excuses. And what are the conditions of the Persians upon them? The Persians told them, for us not to wage war on you, you should never bring anything innovated in religion. Nor should you give refuge to anybody who has come with anything new. Then he said to the Prophet because the Persians were a great empire, we could not protect you from them, but we'll protect you from the Arabs. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, I could not accept a person to protect us, except he has to be able to protect us from what? All sides. It's pointless. If he could not protect us from all sides, I could not accept it. However, though, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives you victory over your enemies? Will you تسبحون Allah wa تقدسون? Will you do tasbih of Allah? May accept Islam? They said, wa laka thalik. Indeed, we'll do that. And this tribe, Banu Shayban, when the light of Islam entered into them and Islam started to spread, they eventually, those who they feared so much from the Persians, they went to war with them and they conquered Persia. Do you know the commander that con conquered Persia? The same Muthanna ibn al-Haritha, he was the one that led the conquest of Persia, what we know as Iran today. So they conquered the Persians. So the Prophet wasallam could not accept that condition from them. So this was the strategy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the dirasa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now after this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not stop, but rather the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continued. And through his continuation and persistence came tala'i and nur light at the end of the tunnel, to show, never give up hope. Light appeared at the end of the tunnel. And what was that light? Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he said, Makatha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi Makkata ashara sinin. The Prophet stayed in Makkah 10 years. And he used to go and call to the people from Manazilihim. He used to go to their houses and their dwellings. Why would he go to their housing and dwellings instead of just calling them in Makkah, in the, in the areas of the Quraysh? Why would he do this? We mentioned this last week. This is part of the strategy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when he used to call them, in the areas of the Quraysh, always behind him was who? Abu Lahab. Saying to the people, I know him. He's my, he's my who? 
He's my nephew. Kadab. He's a liar. So the Prophet ﷺ, to avoid that disturbance, will go to them in their dwellings. So he will go to them there, but he didn't limit himself to an area. And this is one of the things about doing anything, you must have more than one option. The Prophet ﷺ had a plan A, plan B, C, Z. All plans. Don't limit yourself to one option. And that's why in Surah Yusuf, when the father of Yusuf was saying to his brothers to enter upon them, what did he say to them? لا تدخلوا من باب واحد Do not enter from one door. ولكن ادخلوا من باب من أبواب متفرقة Enter from different entrances. So the Prophet had different ways. So he would go to them, he said, in their houses. And he would choose the right place along with the right time. So he said, and then he would go to them, في عكاظ Ukad is one of the biggest marketplaces of the Arabs. But it was only at certain times of the season. From the first of Dhul Qa'dah all the way to the Ishreen, the 20th of Dhul Qa'dah, it will be in Suq al -Ukad. And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say to them in Suq al -Ukad? What was his statement? To show that you must have, for everything you do, a vision and a what? Mission. Vision and mission. The vision of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was what? He used to say to them, to the tribes, Man yu'wini, who is going to give me protection? Man yansuruni, who is going to aid me? So the vision was what? Aid, protection. And what was the mission? Hatta uballigha risalata rabbi. My mission is to convey the message of my Lord. And all the tribes, they all memorized this. They all knew what he wanted. When you go to the market, what did he used to say? Because now he's talking to the normal people. What you tell the normal people, it doesn't go to the normal people, who's going to help me, who's going to aid me. Because they can't help you, they can't aid you. So what would he say to them in the market? He would say to the people in the markets, a different statement. People say, la ilaha you'll be successful. Regularly, go to the market. And going to the market, this is 20 days in Uqqad. From first of Dhul Qa'da to the 20th of Dhul Qa'da. And then the market closes. So when the market closes, Tayyip, is it over? The market moves to Suq al-Majanna. Suq al-Majanna will run from the 20th to the 30th of the Qa'da. The Prophet will also be there. Subhanallah. Alayhi afdalu salatu was salam. To show the effort he did in conveying the message of his Lord. Because it's not just about going to the market. What did he meet? The Sahabi said, I saw him in Jahiliyyah. That when he used to call the people in the market, Min man talafa fi wajihi. There will be some people that will spit in his face. Some people will pick up dust and throw it in his face. Imagine, for two, once only for me, that's enough. Someone spits in your face. And Prophet was not a weak person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the strength of how many men? Four zero. He wasn't a weak person. The Sahabi radiallahu anh, they said, we knew the brave of us in the battle because the bravest of us will be next to who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because that was the heat, of the, they will be hiding behind him. And he used to be Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anh. Very strong, very brave. But for the sake of Allah, he took it. For 20 days, people spitting, throwing dust in your face. Then you will go to Suq al-Majanna, the same thing. And then after the market season or the trading season was over, after Dhul Qa'dah, what's the month after Dhul Qa'dah? Dhul Hijjah, the time of Hajj. Then you will go to Hajj again, calling to people, subhanAllah. Standing in Mina, if all the tribes of the Mina, and you'll be calling the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the persistence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paid off so much that a man would come from Yemen, from Masr, from Egypt, from Yemen. And they all knew him. They say, they used to warn their people before you go. If you go to Mecca, you're going to meet Fatah min Quraysh. You're going to meet a young Quraysh man. Don't let him become a fitna for you. And the people used to point, that's that man from Quraysh. That's the one from Quraysh. That's the one from Quraysh. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued like this. So Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu an, he said he continued like this until the people of Yathrib, they came to him. Where's Yathrib? Medina. That, we came to him from Yathrib. We gave him refuge. We believed in him and came from him were people that believed in him and he taught them the Quran and they went back to their people and they made their people become Muslims. The Ansar, the people of Medina, until they remain a house from the house of the Ansar, illa wa fiha rahtum min al muslimin There was a family of Muslim, rahat. A family of who? Muslims. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he approached families, but not any strong family. A what family? Strong family. And this shows us the importance strategically as well. 
if you want to give da'wah, whether you're Nigerian, whether you're Pakistan, whether you're Bangladeshi, one of the things you have to put in consideration is your what? Your family. Your family. I remember once, me and a brother, we went on a business trip to one area. To, I think it was, uh, it was Morocco in those days. Yes? <laughs> and in the middle of it became a dispute. And this guy was taking our stuff, kicking it here, we're throwing it. I said, subhanAllah. If I was where I'm from, Nigeria, being what I am and the family what I have, you will not be able to do this. But that's dunya. But for deen, you have to have that rahat. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Lut, who said, I wish a meal ila rukinin shadid. I wish I had a strong family. After Lut, all the Anbiya came from what? Strong families. And that's why Shu'ib, his people say to him, Ya Shu'ib, ma nafqahu kathira mimma taqub. You don't understand what you're talking about. And you amongst us, you're a weak person. So what's the next step? Attack you. But what did they say? If it was not for your family though, we would have stoned you to death. It's only your family. That's the only reason. So the Ansar in every single family, strong family, was a Muslim. So you can't attack your own family. That's what they had. You couldn't attack your own family. So he said they don't remain a house from the Ansar except in there was a Muslim. Now the first connection of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Ansar began when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard that a strong Arab tribe or strong personality was approaching Mecca. And never any time he heard this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always go and approach them when he heard a strong tribe was coming. And this strong tribe that approached was not the tribe itself but the individual. This individual that approached from amongst them was known لِجَلَدِهِ وَشِعْرِهِ It was known for his strong will, resolute character, and determination, and his shi'r, his poetry. The nickname, because the Arabs they have a name, a nickname and a kunya. The nickname for this person that approached from Medina was known as Al-Kamil, the perfect one. That was his nickname. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam therefore approached him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, because his name is Kamil. What do you have? What do you possess? He said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Majalla. Majalla is a book or pages that contains wisdom. He said, I have the Majalla. I have the Majalla of who? The Majalla of the one that's known for wisdom. And who's known for wisdom in the Quran? Huh? Luqman. He said, I have with me the Majalla, the collections of the wisdom of Luqman. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "That فَلَعَلَّ الَّذِي الَّذِي مَعَكَ مِتْلُ الَّذِي مَعِيَ Maybe that which you have is like what I have. So he, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Present it to me." So he presented it to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna hada kalam hasanun." What you said, Hassan, is very good. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him after that, "وَالَّذِي مَعِيَ أَفْضَل." However, that which I have is better than what you have. He said, that which I have. He said, what I have, Qur'anun. I have a Qur'an. Anzalahu Allah. That came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fihi huda wa nur. In it is guidance and light. So then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam presented it to him. And he was impressed. And he knew that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had is better than what he had. Then he went back to Medina. They said he went back to Medina, Muslim, as a Muslim, but he never called his people to Islam. And his people, they witnessed Yomul Bu'ath, which is important, the day of Bu'ath. What's the day of Bu'ath? The day of war, severe war and slaughter between Aus and Khadraj, the two tribes of Medina. He was killed in that battle. So he never had a chance to convey Islam to his people. The second connection of the Prophet ﷺ with the Ansar, so this man, Al Kamil, his name was Suwayd ibn Samit. Suwayd ibn Samit. The second connection of the Prophet Sallam with the Ansar was with Iyas ibn Mu'adh. Iyas ibn Mu'adh, because of the war of Bu'ath and the constant war between the house and Khazraj, everybody went to seek allegiance. So his tribe, to help to seek aid against Khazraj, they came to Quraysh to seek allegiance in the Quraysh. So when they came, the Prophet Sallam had this strong tribe at Qum. So he went to them. He said, that which you're looking for from the Quraysh, I've got something better for you than what they want from the Quraysh. So they said to the Prophet, what do you have? He said, that which I have, which is better than what allegiance you want. He said, Ana 
Rasulullah ila al-ibad and a message of Allah to the slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ad'uhum ila an ya'budu Allah according to worship Allah Ta'ala wa la yushriku bihi shay'a and not to associate partners with him. Wa unzila alayya al-kitab and the book has been revealed to me and he mentioned the teachings of Islam and so on and so forth. Iyas ibn Mu'adh was a young person, still a young person then, and he was not the leader of the tribe. Immediately, he jumped and he turned around to his people. And he said to his people, that, that which indeed, هَذَ وَاللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا جِئْتُمْ لَهُ You see what he told us? It's even better than what we came for in the first place. But it was the youngest of the tribe. So the chief of the tribe took a dust and threw it in his face and told him basically, be quiet. He said, we didn't come from this. Even though it's better, but this is not what we've come for. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left them and they went back to Medina. As for Iyas ibn Mu'adh, the, first connect, the second connection with the Ansar, he was also killed in this war, this horrible war between Aus and Khazraj. And it said he died Muslim. The people said when Mu'adh or Iyas ibn Mu'adh, when he died, that even Sakaratul Mawt, when the pangs or the death was approaching him in the battle, that upon his death, you hallelujah. You're saying, La ilaha illallah. You kabiruhu, Allahu akbar. And doing tahmid, alhamdulillah, wa yusabbihuhu, subhanallah. He died as a Muslim. So these were the first connections of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the Ansar, with the people of Medina. As for the third, time the Prophet Sallallahu started to meet the people of Medina was as a group now. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now everyone that's been approaching is from different tribes seeking protection against who? Khazraj. Now who happened to come themselves this time? Khazraj. They came to Mecca. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Khazraj to a small group and he said, Amin Mawali al Yahud, are you from the ones who give him patronage, protection, and the Yahud are your clients? Because the Yahud they're not originally from where? Medina, but they're on the Wu, the people of Medina. They align themselves to Wu Khazraj. They align themselves to Khazraj. He said, are you from these people? They said, yes. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, will you allow me to sit and speak to you? They said, Bella, sit. So the Prophet Sallallahu sat with them. He called them to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He presented Islam to them. When he presented Islam to them, قَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضِ because the Arabs, they never had a prophet amongst them. They were not people of the book. They knew nothing about Christianity, Judaism, but Medina was different. Why was Medina different? Because the people of the book, the Jews were there. And these people heard certain things from the Jews. So, they said to each other, They said, this is a prophet. How did they know? Because of what they heard from who? The Jews. But what did they hear from the Jews? They said, He is a prophet. This is the same prophet that the Jews have been threatening you with. Because the Jews, they used to threaten them, because they're under them, that wallahi, there's going to come a prophet, and he's going to be raised where? In Medina. They said, when this prophet comes, we're going to kill you and destroy you in the same way Allah destroyed Ad. With the mood. We're going to destroy you like this. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ that when a book came to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that confirmed that which was with them they used to boast and brag to the kuffar, the mushikin that when this prophet I'm going to deal with you and then what that, that which came to them they knew it came to them they disbelieved in it because he was not a what? he was not a Jew that's why racism, as I mentioned last khutbah, is batrul ghamtun nas, looking down on people. And it calls you do what? Batrul haq, reject the truth. That's one of the illnesses of racism, that I cannot take this, he cannot tell me what to do. He can possibly not be better than me. So they rejected it. So now they knew this was a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they accepted Islam, and they said to the prophet, sallam, we've left behind our people. And between us, Khazraj and else is a what? A war. They said, this deen, to show subhanAllah, tawheed. What is the meaning of tawheed? Is the root verb of what? Wahada yuwahidu, unification. So when Allah Ta'ala said, wa'atasimu bihablillah, hold on to the rope of Allah, it's a command from Allah. What did they say is hablullah? Tawheed. The moment you all upon tawheed, you will become what? United. So they said, maybe that which you've brought, 
from this deen, it will cause us to become what? United. If you could unite us, because this war between them was generation after generation, if you can unite us, you're upon the truth. So they went back to their people and they started to quote their people to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the point they said, Lam yabqa dar. They never remained a house from the dar of the Ansar except they all heard about the Prophet. All of them. So they continued, they continued, they continued for a whole year. But they didn't give the Prophet what? Bay'ah. There were six of these people, they didn't give you bay'ah. The six of these people, the first of the Ansar to accept Islam as a group was Abu Umama. Abu, what was his name? Abu, Abu Umama As'ad ibn Zurara. What was his name? Abu Umama As'ad ibn Zurara. What was his name? Barakallahu feek. Very good. I expected everyone to say Abu Umama. The Arabs have a kunya, ism, and a laqab. Name, kunya, Abu Kada, and a laqab, and a nickname. So his kunya was Abu Umama. And his name was As'ad. Yes? Well, this was the first of the six. The second was Auf ibn al-Harith. Auf ibn al-Harith. Min bani Najjar. The third was Rafi' ibn Malik. The fourth was Qutbah ibn Amir. The fifth was Uqbah ibn Amir. And the sixth was Jabir ibn Abdullah. The sixth. So they went back to their people. They never took the bay'ah from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The bay'ah happened the next year. They came back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They left him as how many? Six. But they strategically looked for people that were strong. So when they came back, they came back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next year, as how many? As 12. They doubled in number. But the difference this time was, when they came the first time, they were what? Khazraj. When they came back, there was 10 from Khazraj and 2 from Aus. So now, subhanAllah, in a year they unified due to Islam. They came back out in Khazraj, but they, they didn't just bring anybody with them. They bring the chieftains of the tribes with them. Twelve of them came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now the affair, it becomes serious. So after this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they came to him, Ubadah ibn Samit al-Khazraji was from Khazraj. He said, I was there fi bay'ah. In the bay'ah, the first pledge of allegiance gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which is in a place called Aqaba, the first pledge of allegiance. And like we said last week, the Prophet would choose the time. What time do you think this place, this uh, bay'ah, this allegiance took place to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What time? Night time. He did it at night to avoid the attention of the mushrikeen. So it happened at night. He said, I was there. Wa kunna ithna ashara rajulan. There was 12 of us. Fa bay'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nisa. We gave the Prophet sallam the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance of the women. Because it's the pledge of allegiance of the men and it's that of the what? The women. Where is the pledge of allegiance of the women? In Surah 2, Mumtahana. Ya ayyuhal nabi, idha ja'aka al-mu'minat fabayi'ahunna. If the women come to you, believe in women. Because there's a difference between the pledge of allegiance of the women and that of the men. Because at that time, jihad was not made obligatory. So the pledge of allegiance of the women was what? Man minkum. Which one of you remember Surah 2, Mumtahana? The bay'ah of the women that Allah Ta'ala told us, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ If the believing women come to you to give bay'ah, the bay'ah should be upon what? أَن لَا يُشْرِكْنَا بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا They don't associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Ansar, the bay'ah they gave to the Prophet was what? They will not do shirk. وَلَا يَسْرِقْنَا And they would not do what? Steal or theft. وَلَا يَزْنِينَ وَلَا يَقْتُلْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنْ And they will not kill their children. وَلَا يَأْتِينَ بِبُهْتَانِ They will not approach falsehood. Either with their hands or their foot. وَلَا يَعْسِينَكَ And they will not disobey you in ma'roof. So they said we gave this pledge of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ. After giving this pledge of allegiance, the Prophet ﷺ said to them that إِنْ وَفَّيْتُمْ If you're truthful and you fulfill this pledge, لَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ You have jannah. وَإِنْ غَشَيْتُمْ And if you cheat this or you, you're deceitful مِنْ ذَلِكَ شَيْئًا In anything, your affair belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wills, he'll punish you. If he wills, he'll forgive you. So now, they gave the Pledge of Allegiance. How many were there? Twelve. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now decided this is the time to send with them the first ambassador emissary of Islam. This emissary is laqab was al-muqri'u, the reciter. 
It was known as Al Mukri'u. And this first emissary, the first ambassador of Al Islam ever, the first ambassador of Islam, Al Mukri, was his nickname, Laqab. What was his name? What was his ism? Mus'ab, your brother's name, Mus'ab ibn Umair. Your brother's Mus'ab, right? Mus'ab ibn Umair was the first ambassador for Islam. He went to Medina. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that's how I was looking for him. I gave you a clue. Yes? He was the first ambassador of Islam. He went with him due to what he had memorized from the Quran, his hikmah, his knowledge. He went to Medina to call the people to Al-Islam. And many people, and many reputable people, the aristocrats of Medina, they accepted Islam through Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And these reputable people, when they accepted Islam, their subjects or the people under them likewise accepted Islam because of Mus'ad ibn Umair. So Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he descended and he went to the house of Wu, who has As'ad ibn Zarara. He went to his house and he was with him because he's from a what? A strong family. And you see the wisdom of going to him. When he went to stay with As'ad and he saw I calling people to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, there was a meeting between two of the chieftains of Medina. Two of the tribal leaders, the most respected people of Medina. They were sitting down one day. And these two were Usaid ibn Hudayr was Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. These two sat down. So as they were sitting down, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh were Usaid ibn Hudayr were the leaders of their people. And they were mushrikeen at that time. When they heard about Musa ibn Umair and his efforts in da'wah, Sa'ad, he said to Usaid, he said, Sa'ad said to Usaid what? La Aba Laka. You do not have a father. The Arabs who say you do not have a father in instances where they want to encourage you and push you to do an action, meaning there's no one to support you now. You have to do the action of somebody who has no father. You have to make an effort here. La Aba Lak. It means it's serious. There's no father. You on your own. He said, La Aba Lak. He said, go now to these two men. So who's saying this? Sa'ad is saying this to who? To Usaid. Sa'ad said to him, go to these two men that have come to deceive our people, make fun of their mind and prevent them from doing this and prevent them from coming to our diyar, to our abode. فَإِنَّهُ لَوْ لَا أَسْعَدْ And the question is, why doesn't Sa'ad do it himself? Why doesn't he do it himself? Why is he saying Usay? He said, فَإِنَّهُ لَوْ لَا أَسْعَدْ if it wasn't for Asad ibn Zurara, I would have gone myself. But he has a place with me. And what does he have with me? He's the son of my auntie. He's my cousin. I can't do it. So you do it. Yes? So he sent Sa'ad to him. Or Sa'ad sent Usaid to these two. So when they approached, Zurara, he saw them and he said to Musa ibn Umayr that this person, Sayyid Qawmihi, this is like an aristocrat, a leader of his people that's coming to us. So Musa, he said, if he was to sit down and allow me to speak to him, I'll speak to him. That, if he speaks, ukallimuhu. But when Sa'ad or when Usaid, he, come to them, he came to them, how did he come to them? Usaid came to them standing over their heads, mushattiman, throwing abuses at them. And not only did he come to and abuse at them, he approached them with a yadi hirba. He approached them with a spear in his hand. And after insulting them, he said to them, that you've come to deceive our people. Not our people, du'afa'una, the weak from amongst us. Leave us alone. In kana, in kanat lakuma bi anfusikuma hajah. If you care about your lives or your soul, leave us alone. I mean, I will kill you. So Mus'ab ibn Umair, radiallahu an, he said to him, gave him the reply of a believer, a gentle, patient, calm believer. He said, would you just sit down and allow me to speak to you? Would you? If you're pleased what I have to say, then accept it. And if you're not, you can reject it. And we'll stop. So now, Usaid, he said, okay, that's fair. I'll sit down and listen. So, Rakaza hirba, he put away spare and he sat down. كَلَّمَهُ مُسْعَبْ عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ Musa spoke to him about Islam. وَقَرَأْ عَلَيْهِ القرآن. Read the Quran to him, which is what we should do a lot to whoever we give da'wah to. Then, after they finished speaking to him, or he finished speaking to him, reading the Quran to him, those around them, the narrator of the hadith, they said, وَاللَّهِ لَعَرَفْنَ فِي وَجْهِ الْإِسْلَامِ They said before, Usaid even spoke 
after Musa Abbas spoke to him, they said, Wallahi, by Allah, we could see Islam in his face, even before he spoke. As soon as he opened his mouth, he said, Ida aradtum an tadkhulu. If somebody, if you want to enter this deen, what do you have to do? They said, Tagsil, you wash, take a bath, tatahar, you purify yourself, purify your clothes, bear witness to the shahada, and you pray. As I told him this, what do you think he did? Faqama, he stood up immediately. Faqtasala, and he took a bath. Watahara thawbehi, he purified his two clothing, two pieces of his clothes. And he did his shahada immediately. Thumma, and then he stood up. Fasalla, wa raka'a, or fa raka'a raka'atain. He prayed two raka'a immediately. And he became a Muslim. Then he said to them, that what I've done here, and this was the man in Hajjah Ansar, them accepting Iman was not enough. They had to call others to it. He said, I've left behind me Rajulan, a man. And what did he leave behind? Sa'ad. He said, This person left behind. If this person follows you lot, known body under him from his subjects will not go with him. If he accepts Islam, everyone will accept Islam. Yes? Sa'ursiluhu ilaykum al an. I'm going to send him to you now. So he went back to Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. And when he approached them, as he was approaching Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, because Usayd was his friend, he said, Wallahi, before he approached, he said, الوجه, That you see Usayd, I see in his face, he's come with a different face to that which he went with. He knew immediately. So he said, what did you do? He said, I spoke to them. And when I spoke to them, what they had to say, he didn't tell them became Muslim yet. He said, Wallahi, ma ra'aytu bihi ma ba'asan. There was nothing wrong with what they had to say. Uh, and I told them, nahaytu huma. I prevented them. I said, I prohibited them, which he did initially. He said, I prohibited them. And they said, we're going to do what we want anyway. What do you think this do to the head of Sa'ad? It made him angry. They're going to do what they want. And he said, on top of that, I have been told, and I've also been told because of their behavior, Banu Haritha, they're going to go to who? To your cousin uh, and do what? Asad, and they're going to kill him. So now he had two things on his mind. The fact they don't care what he's saying, but at the same time wants to protect who? His cousin. To show subhanAllah, even though it was a mushrik, his cousin was a what? Muslim. That sometimes that emotional blood tie, it helps. So when he heard this, Haraja ilayhim sari'an, he went immediately to them. Because there is rumors they're going to kill his cousin. He went immediately. And when he went immediately to them, he found Mus'ad ibn Umayr and his cousin As'ad ibn Zurara mutma'inneen. They were okay, there's nothing wrong with them. He said, okay, what he wanted from me was just to come here and listen to what you had to say. He knew that which Usaid had done to him. He just wanted to come and listen. So when he went, he said the same thing which Usaid had said to them initially. With his spear, and Musa Abid Umayr told him the same thing. That look, just sit down, listen. And that's the exact same thing that happened with who? Usaid happened with Sa'ad, accepted Islam. Same exact thing. And upon accept Islam, he said to them, I am going to go back to my people and speak to them. So when he went back to his people, he called everyone from his tribe. And he turned to them and said to them, I'm asking you. Before he went to them, the people saw his face and said, he's come back with a different face. Wallahi, this is not the same person. So he came to his people, he stood, he stood in front of them and said, I'm asking you. Ya Bani Abdul Ashhal, ta'lamuna amri fikum? What do you know about me? What do you think of me? Am I command? Am I rule? What do you think of me? They said, Sayyiduna, you are our Sayyid, our leader, wa afdaluna, and the best of, of us, ra'yan, in terms of opinion and views. And you're the best leader we've ever had. So he said to them, after they said all of this, he said, فَإِنَّ كَلَامْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَنِسَائِكُمْ عَلَيَّ حَرَامٌ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ He said, any speaking between the men from amongst you, the women from amongst you and me, is haram from today onwards, until you all believe in Allah and His Messenger. Imagine that, to the whole of his subjects. Don't talk to me till you all believe. And after saying this, it was said, for wallahi, ma amsa, the evening did not reach. Fidari Bani Abdul Ashhal, in the household of everyone from Bani Abdul Ashhal, that there was not a man 
or a woman, illa musliman or muslimatan, except became a Muslim man or woman, not a single household from his tribe. They all accepted Islam. It was said that after this now, Sa'ad went back to the house of Mus'ab, uh, went back to the house of, went back to Mus'ab, to the house of Asad ibn Zurara, and they continued their da'wah from there. And there was not a household from Ansar, except they accepted Islam, illa rijal, except a man or somebody, man kana min bani usayrim, from a tribe of bani usayrim. And who said, this one person was Amr ibn Thabit ibn Qaysh. فَإِنَّهُ تَأَخْرَ إِسْلَامُ His Islam was delayed until the day of Uhud. And on the day of Uhud, he accepted Islam and he entered into the battle immediately in Uhud. Immediately. فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ سَجْدَ قَتْ And he didn't do a single sajda. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about him in a hadith that this person is one of those people. رَجُلٌ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمْ يُصَلِّ صَلَاةِ قَتْ He prayed a he entered Jannah without praying a single salah on the day of Uhud. And the people did not know who that person was. And he said that person was Usayrim from Bani Abdi Al-Ashhal. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we'll look at the fawa'id, the benefits and the durus and examples for us. And we're going to bay'a al-aqba thaniya, the second pledge. And after the second pledge, what happened after that? The hijrah to Medina. But we're not going to go into the hijrah until we finish the verses of Mecca in the orders they were, they were sent in. So after next week, we're going to go back to the tafsir and relate it back again to the, the seerah. So we're going to go into tafsir maybe a few weeks to reach Ayatu al Makki uh, Madaniya, the, Mad, uh, the Madani verses, insha'Allah ta'ala. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha, anta astaghfirullah.